Hey guys. Recently, YouTuber Max Arcade restored a Spartan Equison 931. And I thought I'd record a quick video on mine because it's a little bit different. Right off the bat, you see that the cabinet on mine is quite different from a stock 931. And when I first got this, I wasn't sure what I had. The chassis is labeled a 931. And the cabinet had a label on it that says a Spartan Equison 931. But this doesn't match any photo I've ever seen. So I thought maybe I had what they call a Frankenstein set sometimes. Which means a set comprised of bits of other sets. Until... A guy on the Antique Radio Forum saw my photos and sent me this, which is a scan of a catalog from the Nelson Electric Company Chicago, which shows my cabinet, the Cohen Model 96 Walnut Radio Console cabinet. And as you read through this, it, it uh, became apparent that what people would do is they would order this cabinet, which does not come with a radio, and they would order the radio chassis separate and do a custom install for kind of an upgraded look. So this is actually a quite quite a nice cabinet. Got a lot of inlays and uh, applique and whatnot. Nice turned legs down here. And the coolest thing is these nice matched uh, veneered panels that slide to show you the radio. When I first got this radio, it was missing the tuning knob, and I spent a long time finding one. But eventually I did. And as you can see, this doesn't quite line up perfectly in here, which was another tip that uh, something wasn't quite right. And I imagine that's because this radio cabinet was designed to fit uh, the most common layout of, the, of its era, which was like late 20s, early 30s. Which uh, was very common to have the, the, the dial on a drum rotating vertically and three knobs like this. There are some shims holding this up on the other side. Perhaps if I uh, adjust those a bit I can lower it down. Maybe it'll look a little bit less odd. But even so, uh, looks pretty good I think. Original grill cloths in great shape. Now I'll turn it around and give you a look what's on the inside which is a completely stock 931 chassis and speaker and here it is from the back this board that it's on looked just like Max Arcade's where uh, this is the original board that would have slid into the original 931 cabinet which had uh, like grooves cut in the side and this whole tray would just slide in well, in this radio uh, cabinet, rather, there uh, there aren't any, so it was just sitting here when I got it. I put in some shims to kind of help it line up better, because there's some cords that go through down there that aren't lined up. And if I don't put these shims, those wires kind of get crunched a bit, so that's why I've got it like this right now. Uh, so, here's what the uh, original power transformer looks like. When I got mine, the rectifier was missing, but since then I picked up a Globe 80 tube. These things have gotten so expensive, it's ridiculous. Two used Globe 80 tubes just sold on eBay yesterday for $120. That's insane. <laughs> the ST style, which looks like this, you can usually get for like 10 bucks, but to pay $60 for a used one of these, that's crazy. Here's what the original capacitor looked like which uh, is ridiculously large uh, considering it's all of like I think uh, 12 or maybe 16 microfarads total the cap up here is, is kind of neat plastic cap that covers the top of it and the, the, the can itself is ground and then these lugs go to each of the two sections but, uh, here's the cap the Autorad Electric Corporation from Michigan and that's where Spartan was from they were based out of Michigan so I will be re rebuilding that cap at some point I haven't taken this out in a while it's kind of dusty but this uh, chassis here is steel and it's painted with black enamel paint 
I went over it with some car wax when I first got it, so underneath all the stuff, it's in pretty good condition. Here's the label. Spartan power converter. The radio itself is in several chassis. There's the power converter, which is the power supply and output amplifier. And then there's this guy, which um, is the intermediate frequency, although this really doesn't have an R, an IF. It's kind of like a, a, a tuned radio, but that's not really right either. Uh, and this is the pre-selector. So the way this really works is antenna goes into this which has no tubes it's just a big tuning unit which just has a wire sticking into this there's no actual electrical contact it's just like a wire rod and in here is a six tube wideband amp uh, basically whatever signal comes into this box gets amplified a lot and then fed to these audio amps so all the tuning is done inside of this pre-selector uh, the reason they did that I believe is that they didn't want to pay RCA their for the patent rights to the uh, their super heterodyne and they came up with this uh, this novel wacky design these are the two output tubes that came with it which are 182B tubes and they test okay but uh, since I got this radio about two years ago I've been uh, occasionally looking on eBay and eventually I found some of these what these are, are the original globe output tubes this radio would have come with. The one on the left has the actual Spartan shield on it. And here's the original box from the Cardin company, which made most of the tubes that Spartan used. You can see there are the specs. It's a 182B and so on. Cardin was also based on Michigan. So once I get this radio working, uh, at least for photo ops or to show off, I am going to run it with these, but I think for uh, kind of everyday use, I'll leave the uh, more common ST type in there. As for the speaker, this is pretty sweet. At first, I wasn't sure if it was the original, because it's actually a Jensen speaker. But since then, I've seen a number of others that had this same type of Jensen speaker in it. So. Jensen dynamic speaker concert model. It had a bit of a tear in it. Uh, I've since patched it a bit, but uh, I think I'll just get this reconed at some point again once the radio is working. Uh, this is something else that I thought was really odd when I first got this radio is that these are the original leads from the audio output transformer, original spade terminals, and everything. Obviously, they don't reach. Um, they, there were little scraps of wire wrapped around each end of this and going to these spade terminals. I suppose I'll rewire this, which is a shame because this wire is actually in pretty good shape and so are these spade terminals, but it's just not going to reach. They also had to actually cut a notch out of the bottom of this cabinet to accommodate this speaker. I'll move it uh, around a bit so you can get a better look at it. Here it is from the front, as you can see, it's in really, really good shape, so it was really a bummer that it was had that bad tear, which extended all the way from the center out to the edge in two spots, so I had to put all this patching compound uh, glue, basically, on there, which discolored the cone a bit, but uh, it's in pretty good shape, uh, I don't, it doesn't feel like the, uh, the voice coil's rubbing or anything, so, you know, maybe it'll sound alright with this patch in there. I'll pull out these uh, chassis and give you guys a better look at, uh, at that. Here's a closer look at the chassis. Here's that pre-selector tuning unit, which is really just a four-section, a very large tuning capacitor. That goes to this drum tuning dial. And mine's got a problem that I guess is fairly common with this model. The tuning shaft uh, rotates around this way, and there's a horizontal shaft. And inside of that, there's a pulley up front and a pulley up back. And there's a wire that wraps around those, does like a, a twist, and then rotates the vertical drum. Well, those pulleys are made out of something called pot metal, which is a really cheap alloy of tin and some other common metals. Well, it's not very stable, and it tends to disintegrate over time, which is what's happened to my pulley up front. 
Um, it's really crumbly. If I put any kind of pressure on it, more bits just fall off. So I'm going to have to re replace that somehow with something. And here is that wideband amplifier. Um, it's supposed to have a match set of Cardan 484 tubes. Mine came with a mismatched set of, I think, a couple 484s, a 485, and some 27s. Uh, since then, I very luckily scored about eight more 484s on eBay. A couple were bad, but uh, between the ones that came with this and those, I do have a complete set of 484s. At the time, I didn't realize how uh, hard they would become. Uh, to find, because uh, at the time, I think over the course of a few months, I saw numerous lots being sold of 8, 10, 12 of them at a, at a shot. Since then, when I do see them, which isn't often, they're just being sold individually for like 30 or 40 bucks a piece, uh, which really sucks. <laughs> um, so these, this is kind of an odd mismatch in here, but I, I do have another box elsewhere that has a full set. Here's one of them. You can see it's 484 and they have a nice label on them. Here's some Arcturus tubes which I just put in there for safekeeping. Arcturus was famous for using his blue tinted glass. It's really just a marketing gimmick more than anything functional. But they happen to fit in these sockets so I just put them in here so they wouldn't get damaged or broken or anything. Because uh, I've had this radio for a while and I have not uh, gotten around to attempting to work on it. Part of it was I was leery on working on something quite this old because uh, I believe this is the radio, oldest radio that I've got. Uh, but now that I've seen one restored and working, more or less, uh, I'm not quite so fearful. The other reason I haven't worked on this is that uh, I have not been able to actually get this box apart. The top came off easily enough. And I can unscrew the base from this wood board here, but I I need to get in underneath here to work on those capacitors, coils, and resistors down in there. So if anybody's got any tips on how to get this apart, uh, I'd appreciate it. Probably just comes down to I have to apply more force than I've been doing to really uh, you know pop this thing apart because it's been sitting here for all these years. Also, this uh, wiring terminal block is kind of broken and a little bit nasty. Wiring in general, though, isn't too bad. Uh, so, uh, really, there's not a whole lot to this. Um, this is the original power transformer. I've ohmed it out and it, it tests okay, but I've not tried powering it up. And there's a rectifier, two suction filter cap, audio output transformer, there's some push pull output tubes. Maybe there's a couple capacitors and resistors under here, but nothing too crazy. There's a quarter inch phono jack, which is original to these radios. Believe it or not, way back then they did add a phono plug. And there's some capacitors in here, like I mentioned, that need to be restuffed. And I need to check out uh, the resistors and coils to make sure they're not open or way off value. And this, I don't think I'll need to touch this at all. There's one trimmer cap here, but inside I don't think there's really anything that needs any kind of adjustment. So I'll, you know, get this stuff going first and then see if we'll see how it works. And if uh, only if I absolutely have to, will I bother touching that? I've got a bunch of other projects to finish, but one of these days, hopefully sooner than later, I will get around to working on this. That's all for now.